So before going into Final Fantasy 16, I was already expecting great things from the combat being supervised by legendary specialists in the industry, the graphics and performance on the PlayStation 5 being the gold standard, and of course the story and characters with the team responsible for Final Fantasy 14 and all of its success. It was safe to say that this game was in great hands, but after finally getting the opportunity to play and experience this game for over 6 hours thanks to Square Enix, I can confidently say Final Fantasy 16 is without a doubt my game of the year and a very strong candidate worthy of this title among many other great games to come. 2023 is going to be quite possibly the best that gaming has ever seen in a very long time. It's safe to say we are all winning with this. I also want to get a few things out of the way. A lot of people have been expressing concern in regards to Square Enix possibly showing way too much of this game when it comes to the story of Final Fantasy 16. I can without any doubt say there is a whole lot more left to be seen in this game and we have yet to even begin to scratch the surface. And a lot of you guys will be seeing that firsthand early on when you get your hands on it and your chance to finally play it. The scenes you've been seeing dozens of times in trailers are completely different from what you'd expect when you finally see the full picture and context of it. They did a great job editing around it and hiding details. By the way, now I can answer a lot more questions in the comments below, so please comment your questions and I will answer whatever it is that I can. As long as it pertains to what it is that I played, I got you. I'm just very glad this embargo has finally lifted and this crazy person can finally talk about this game. Also, a lot of this footage in this video and what I played are earlier moments in the story and the game segments that we've pretty much seen a lot of already. We only got to play the first 4 hours with only the base moves and Phoenix abilities. The Titan and Garuda abilities were separate save files for other areas of the game that Square Enix allowed us to briefly play but were limited due to story spoilers. I'm sorry guys, there's no Odin, Shiva or Bahamut footage in this one. They really wanted to give us a solid intro perspective to experience the fundamentals without delving too deep into the story and mechanics by overwhelming players and giving too much away. And yes, I will be breaking down that mechanic that Game Breaker God discovered and shared with me, the one that Yoshi P saw me doing. And I will be mostly talking about interesting new gameplay elements which were not mentioned before in other Final Fantasy 16 videos. Starting with the graphics, YouTube and its bitrate compression does not do Final Fantasy 16 justice. Well, this goes for many games to be honest. I'm rendering this video right now in the highest possible quality, but even then it pales in comparison to how the raw gameplay looks in front of you. For this video, even if your device is not 4K, please select the 4K viewing option so you can use the VP9 encoding to upscale the quality for the best that it can. It'll look good on any device. In Final Fantasy 16, I tested both the graphical focused 4K option and the performance 60 frames mode. And honestly, you're going to want to be playing it in the performance mode because it's very responsive with the inputs and it still looks fantastic graphically. However, one thing that's very interesting by default, even when you are in performance mode 60 frames, the cutscenes do revert back to the graphical focused whenever they show up. This concerned me at first, but it's not really 30 frames per second. It looks to be a little bit more closer to the 40 frames per second range and slightly higher than that. It was absolutely very stable and the cutscenes did not look choppy at all. This decision was done mostly so that they could retain the highest quality graphics possible because there are some cutscenes that really push the bar and they want you to see them in the best way. For all the updates and game breaking guides for Final Fantasy 16, which we will be making on the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. Only 14% of you guys who watch and love the videos are currently subbed. Let's raise that number even higher and get ready because this is just the beginning. Things are getting crazier from here. And now with that being said, let's get into the video. During my play session with Final Fantasy 16, my main focus was absorbing everything that the combat had to offer, which we found lots of and I will be talking about. However, all of that immediately got put on the back burner because I was instantly captivated by the music, which as always is the Square Enix staple of never missing, so you know what to expect. Great impactful music that will stick with you for months. I still find myself humming the opening and world themes of the game. Soken continues to create emotionally driving tracks that really emphasizes on urgency and tension while bringing on brilliant twists of classic themes many of you guys will recognize and love. 
And not only that, the character performances will absolutely floor you in this game. The acting in Final Fantasy 16 is beyond anything that you've ever seen in the series to this point, and it will set the bar not only for Final Fantasy, but for many other games being developed by other companies. Final Fantasy games have done a great job with their voice actings before, but now more than ever, with Final Fantasy 16, the conversations, the emotions, dialogue, it all feels real. There are no forced anime grunts, there's no constant sighs, and there's no random gasps. These feel like real people conversing about real problems in a real but obviously fantasy world. And I can't stress how important this is for keeping you guys engaged from the jump, especially with this story that they're trying to tell. Square Enix is very confident with this game, and rightfully so, it hits all the boxes properly. You will not be disappointed anytime a character in this game opens their mouth. So far, all the characters that I've had the opportunity to experience are really well done. Joshua, Benedicta, and Sid steal the show for me personally. And by the way, it's already well known that Sid is a fan favorite in 16, but there are many, many more layers we have yet to witness with this character. He is my favorite so far and offers a lot to the journey ahead of us. And we've only just gotten started. Sid will be bringing out the best in Clive. You can see early moments already of how Sid just overall makes Clive a better person. And I cannot wait for you guys to be blessed by their lines together. The actors really own each of their characters' roles and completely knock all expectations even further out the park. I really wish I could go into more detail with the story because it's all I've been thinking about since I've gotten to play it, but I think more than anything else, you guys all deserve to dive into this on your own, and I would absolutely be doing an injustice by robbing you guys of that experience. Now, when it comes to the zone and world traversing portions of the game, which a lot of you guys are very excited to hear about, the first four to five hours from what I played mostly require that you fast travel from objectives via the world map menu. I did get to play one open zone area and it was a pretty big design with fields filled with foliage. However, I unfortunately could only access half of this due to the other half being limited for story restrictions. Even though my access for this area was restricted, like I said, it was still very large. And just to give you guys a little comparison, the previous gameplay demonstrations from Yoshi P at PAX East, both of those zones he showcased were significantly larger than what I played. So I am confident that we are going to be in these zones for quite some time with way more exploration packed into it. This segment let me control Clive with Torgal and Jill by my side. Enemies are spread out with a wide variety of them. You can actually see them in the distance as you approach them, from the weaker Crayclaw enemies to Bighorn and Gigas enemies, which have way more health and defense, so fights against them take much longer than the smaller crowds. And there are side missions to participate in, such as helping this courier deliver a package, which talking to him gives a little bit more insight as to how bearers with tattoo marks are being treated. He reacts poorly to seeing that Clive is a bearer and mentions that eh, it's okay to use another man's branded, I suppose. Also, Clive and Jill have dialogue about various things in the world to develop more backstory. For example, I recall them having a conversation about a bridge that used to exist here back in the day, in the area that they're currently exploring. At this point, I expect every sentence heard in this game to deliver us valuable pieces of lore in this story and provide tons of extra information for us. The only complaint from this segment I have is a minor one that may or may not be an issue for others, but again, I feel like I should be mentioning it for myself because it relates to the music during this field area. The track playing is a beautiful one, and I find myself humming it a lot till this day. When you get into a battle, obviously the music switches to a battle theme. But when that battle is over, instead of continuing the world theme where the song left off before the battle started, the world theme starts over again from the beginning, which is very noticeable when you fight enemies with less health, since the battles start and end very quickly, like the Crayclaw enemies. And as Clive gets access to more abilities, he can delete enemies' health bars at a much faster rate. These enemies die quickly, and it can be kind of annoying to hear the world song restarting over and over again after every fight. Like I said before, there are other enemies who have higher defense and health pools, so fights will be longer and this won't be as noticeable for some people. But coming from Final Fantasy VII Remake, it was interesting to see how that game did its music transitions. When battles start in Final Fantasy VII Remake and end, it's perfectly blended to transition almost seamlessly without you even noticing that even happened. I only noticed it in this part of Final Fantasy XVI, and I don't recall this happening before or in the earlier portions, but it's something that I will be keeping my eye on. And again, it's not 
not a huge deal, but it's just something that I figured I mentioned because I noticed it for sure. As I got better at the game, I was getting a little bit more annoyed with the song just restarting. Now, let's talk about the gameplay. The controls in Final Fantasy 16 have a smooth learning curve. I did find myself in the beginning accidentally hitting circle to try to dodge like you would in most games, but actually the dodge button is R1. It took only a few minutes to rewire my brain for that, but the circle button is tied to your icon ability for passives. It can be a gap closer like with Phoenix and Garuda or a defensive counter attack like with Titan. Phoenix, for example, has a dash ability to close the gap on the enemy. I found myself trying to press this to try to dodge backwards and avoid attacks, but this move will only move Clive forward and towards enemies. Garuda's circle ability, Deadly Embrace, grabs and pulls enemies into Clive to start combos or to continue them and string them even further. But if the enemy is a bit too large, it turns into Deadly Jump and launches Clive upwards to combo enemies. Final Fantasy 16 offers a great amount of tutorials, which gives you a lot of insight to your moves. I unfortunately in the beginning skipped the one about the circle ability early on because I was way too eager to play the game and that's, that's just my fault. With each icon ability, Clive will have five different moves on his buttons. Holding down R2 will give you access to his two cooldown moves. Triangle is his ranged attack, level one magic. If you hold it, Clive will charge it up and do level two magic going from arrow to aurora or fire to fire so you get the gist of it my favorite icons to use was a tie between phoenix and titan that is until fighting cowboy shout outs to him showed me that titan's aurora punch can actually be unlocked and triggered on a circle perfect blocked attack for a satisfying pummeling of the enemy making a sweet parry effect option that was super addicting to keep going for and baiting out against enemies again shout outs to fighting cowboy for that for me and what I played with, it ranks with Titan, Phoenix, and Garuda as of right now. A lot of the moves were limited to what we could unlock unfortunately, but it's still impressive to note that even though I had 6 hours with the game, there was still so much left on the table to uncover and discover. The amount of detail and polish is already felt with what we were able to play, so the full unlocked game is about to be something completely crazy that I don't even know if I'm ready for. A lot of people ask about Ifrit's abilities and why doesn't Clive use Ifrit's moves? Well, based on what I played, I can give you an answer to that. While we don't have Ifrit abilities to switch in and out of like we can with Phoenix, Garuda, and Titan, Ifrit's abilities are tied to the limit break Clive has access to. It functions essentially like a devil trigger from Devil May Cry, transforming his limbs and body in flames, emitting crazy damage, AoE, and different attacks while also increasing his speed. All of this, but for a limited time. The limit break bar can be expanded as you continue to play. I've seen in screenshots and other footage, it gets significantly longer, I think five bars total. So I can imagine by then, Clive will be doing even crazier stuff with it. Canceling combos with this felt amazing above everything else, but there very well will be more and we haven't seen anything yet. Phoenix feels like the natural bread and butter icon ability to have on where you're dealing burst damage and can juggle enemies up with uppercuts and closing the gap. It's very well rounded and gets the job done. It's not the best of course, but you can't go wrong with Phoenix for any playstyle. Garuda's abilities do less damage, at least to the point where I was at, and this sacrifice is done in order to deal quick strikes and CC the enemies by pulling them in and extending combos. And it also allows you to do aerial combos too. I wanted to do more experiments with Garuda, like seeing if because it does less damage overall, it'll increase the stagger gauge faster by sacrificing damage total. But I didn't really get enough time with it to try to experiment with that. The demo I played mostly featured Phoenix because it was at the beginning of the game, but the portions with Garuda and Titan were only 30 minutes each. Titan is a steamroller of an icon, literally. Those abilities are all generally AOE based, hitting multiple times too. And they also depend on the defensive playstyle, but you could obviously use it very well offensively. It's different in the sense that you're required to hold down the ability and time the release window for the dial to hit the red portions of the loop. This will increase the damage and the range at which the attacks are landed. And early on, when you have only one icon ability, fights are naturally longer. The cooldowns of each move recover slowly, but as you get more, especially three total icon abilities, I noticed the cooldown times were significantly shorter and you could cycle between all attacks and cooldowns at once as fast as you could. I was spamming each one and switching between each icon to hit every cooldown that I could and by the time I got to the last ability in rotation, the first ability was almost back up from cooldown, meaning there are some insane gameplay and combo loop potentials left to discover. 
And we'll be doing a lot of that as soon as this game drops. Now for the cancel Game Breaker God found. Shoutouts to him again. There is a jump cancel animation where Clive can jump with X, tap triangle for a range attack, and R1 dash to cancel the landing lag of it. You could also do this the other way too, where you jump, dash forward, and press triangle for the range attack. It works either way. I was able to shorten the gaps of combo strings by doing this and initiate combo strings faster by doing this. Also outside of combat, using this was making Clive run faster than sprinting, to which it does look pretty weird and it's kind of funny to see Clive do. This is what Yoshi P was standing behind me and watching me do. I was practicing the timing down for it and trying to see how fast I can move with Clive compared to sprinting. I preferred it more than sprinting to be honest because you can change Clive's direction really quickly with it and do it at any moment. And it also felt really fun to press. So again, Yoshi P please don't remove it. There were a lot of combo finisher moves that Clive has, such as Stinger from Devil May Cry, that have long recovery ending lag animations. So jump canceling helped me to clip the animation of that and many other moves to string together more combo scenarios. Like I said, this is just the first animation cancel found in the game. There for sure will be many, many more and have tons of other uses. The best use that I could find was for movement speed for now and clipping various move animations and recovery frames. Some move animations had a hard time clipping or just didn't work, such as the aerial sword slam where Clive slams down on enemies after doing an aerial attack. That animation was not clippable from what I could see, and Clive had to go through the entire recovery animation after landing it. I'm not saying it's impossible. But with a little bit more practice, we might be able to figure that out. And it won't be long until more broken combinations are discovered because the best part about anything that I played in Final Fantasy 16 was the training and practice mode found in the hideaway. As soon as we got to the hideaway, we were introduced to various characters and side quests. But as part of the main quest progression, we're required to interact with training mode and explore it and try it out. Guys, this thing is the Devil May Cry Void Mode, but way, way crazier. It legit has a button command history like a fighting game to show you what combo inputs and timing will be like. You can even set the enemy dummies to do certain moves so you can practice your reaction time and combos. And using this mode overall will allow us to find the best combo routes, best cancel routes, and just further opportunities to continue to break the game while teaching you guys how to get better. Outside of the story and gameplay, there's nothing more than this that I'll be dedicating over hundreds of hours for. They seriously don't know what they've unleashed. The training mode is a huge W for Final Fantasy 16, and I will be especially utilizing this to be a valuable tool for newcomers who are not as proficient in battle, but are aiming to get better. Because that's what this is designed to do. It's to help you enjoy the game more, overall, learn it at your own pace, and have fun. Square Enix released a short Twitter trailer talking about this, which made me really happy a few weeks ago to be able to talk to you guys about it. But now I can officially reveal that I have already played this mode. I spent a lot of time in there. Clive does have a witch time parry where if you strike an enemy the same time that they're striking you with the square button, Clive will initiate a slowdown effect and be able to quickly execute fast attacks that the enemy is frozen in place and forced to take the damage up. The timing of this is pretty weird. I often tried to actively go for this, but it would either be too fast or too slow to consistently hit it, and would instead randomly trigger it when I'm just mashing combos and not even trying to go for it. Of course, it will be easy to master this with training mode, and using Clive's taunts to force enemies to attack him can help you learn to time it better. This is not to be mistaken with the precision dodging. Precision dodging is a whole different thing with the R1 button. This is a straight up parry where Clive's sword attack is hitting the enemy's attack and it's parrying it. And above all else, blending your combat properly with Torgal, that's going to be the most important resource to master in your combat. And it will make the difference in deleting enemies before they even have a chance to attack because you can initiate combo strings with Torgal and end combo attacks with him for maximum damage. But this is the best part, guys. The moves that have a very long recovery window for Clive, while he's recovering from that, you could actually send Torgal in to juggle attack the enemy. Then Clive will recover and continue to follow up when he can. I think we might have to do a full guide on Torgal alone because the gameplay loop for Final Fantasy 16 is going to be a deep one. I can already tell from the limited portions and skills that I had access to. And by the way, not to overwhelm you guys with anything, all of this is entirely optional. You do not have to be a master or a pro at this game, but I will be making these videos to showcase to you guys the fun and crazy ways you can play this game, but there will also be very efficient and easy ways to go about it. 
I can already tell from the limited portions and skills I had access to, this game is going to be a crazy deep one. But based on what Yoshi P and the other devs said, so many people in the office had different builds from each other. So I'll be dedicating my time to finding what the best all around and most efficient combination of icons and abilities will be. But that's going to take some time because of how great everything already is. Man, this was one of our longest videos we've had to make in a long time. There's still way more to cover though, and we more than likely will be doing more videos, especially if I forgot to talk about anything important. But please, if you guys have any questions at all, I can finally answer them below. So comment below and let's get a discussion going. Final Fantasy 16 is a whole different experience that even non-action combat fans will appreciate because the story and characters are doing something that I strongly believe will revolutionize the way games are being made. Final Fantasy 16 is my game of the year as of right now, and a lot of you guys will hopefully get to see what I mean when you finally get your hands on it soon. Thank you again Square Enix for the opportunity to play this game early and also to be one of the first outlets to talk about it with my community. I look forward to the next month ahead of us as we are one month exactly away from Final Fantasy 16 being in our hands and finally able to play it. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you are new. More Final Fantasy videos are on the way and you do not want to miss them. My name is Blitz and thanks for watching.